Hi, and thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. This is just a short one to give you a little bit of a life update about me and also to answer the question about what this channel of mine is even for. So I want to give a shout out and a thank you to Linda Scott. This video is inspired in large part from a recent comment that you made on my last video where you had mentioned in the past, when I had more subscribers, I was very much more open to talking about my spiritual experiences. So things relating to Arcturians and meditation and mystical things that have happened. And you would ask if I would start talking about those things again, maybe doing some vegan cook with me recipe videos. I know in the past I have declared quite a few times or announced quite a few times that I'm going to start talking about these things again. And then I've ghosted YouTube for a month straight and then come back and done draw with me videos exclusively or junk journal flip through videos exclusively or the latest thing I got into the pick a card tarot reading videos exclusively. And I can totally understand how this would be disappointing and misleading to a viewer because obviously people subscribe to a channel because they resonate with that channel's content. So if a channel owner suddenly switches it up and is no longer doing the content you originally resonated with, yeah, I would also find that off-putting. So of course you were really sweet in the way you worded your comment. I don't feel that you were being critical or anything like that. It seemed more like just friendly suggestions or a request. Um, so I, I kind of feel the need to address this and to explain why I've been so indecisive about what I'm going to share on YouTube. So for those of you who are my regular viewers, you already know my backstory, but I'm going to give a bit of a recap for those who don't. And that's that in 2009, I was recruited into a cult. Prior to that, my spiritual passion and fascination revolved around starseed phenomenon. I'd had some really cool Arcturian awakenings. I was working as a professional tarot card reader at the Tarot Room in Vancouver. And I was starting to learn about crystal healing and gemstone energy. When I was sidetracked into a cult, I felt at that time that the culmination of all the spiritual work I had done previously led me to that place. And so when the cult leader basically hijacked my inner space and hijacked my perception of reality, I simultaneously dropped all the spiritual passion I had had before becoming a cult member and then picked up his philosophy, his teachings, which were mainly based on the brainwashing mechanisms to keep people out of their power and feeding into his power. In 2018, I left that cult. It took me about a year to come to terms with the fact that I had been abused, that it was a nefarious organization, that the leader was criminally responsible for the abuse that took place there. And finally, in 2019, I went public through a YouTube video and a Facebook post. Now, in the time since then, I've gone through all kinds of, I guess, phases of deprogramming, if you want to call it that. And I kind of equate it similarly to the stages of grief or the stages of mourning. You know, you go through denial, then bartering, then acceptance, and then release. It's interesting that throughout those different phases, I have continued to put myself out there publicly on social media. Now, the cult that I exposed has used a lot of the different phases I've gone through in dealing with this to try to debunk the truth that I've revealed about the abuse in the organization. So when I was a full brainwashed member of that cult, obviously I was denying the allegations against the leader because we were told to. I was a very obedient cult member. 
if your guru tells you, tell the world that this place is wonderful and that you're happy and that you're blissful, you tell it because you think you have to. While I was deprogramming, when I was confused, that confusion would come through in my videos. So when I was finally fully out of it, looking back at a lot of the really cringy things I said while I was mind controlled made me feel reluctant to overshare once again. I've kind of come to a space where I feel now that I'm ready to talk about the things I've avoided over the past few years. But the reason I was avoiding them, it's not that I don't care about my viewers or that I don't want to share my journey or that I don't want to keep my promises and say I'll do videos about vegan cooking and then just not do them. It's more that I was so traumatized by the cult abuse and then also traumatized by the cult's retaliation towards my whistleblowing that I had a feeling like anything I say is going to be used against me. If I make videos about vegan cooking, I'm going to have all kinds of non-vegan hate thrown at me by people who feel attacked by my lifestyle. If I make videos about the Arcturians and my beautiful star family and my love for the whole starseed community and that phenomenon, then people who are very rationally minded, who don't believe in a reality beyond the scientific, are going to make content to debunk me or call me crazy. You know, if I talk about my love for repeat numbers and synchronicities, psychologists are going to come in and say that this is dangerous, magical thinking. So it's like every time I had an idea for video content I wanted to produce, there was part of me preemptively anticipating criticism and shying away from that. And I'm sure this is something you can relate to. I'm sure everybody in any field can relate to this. Whoever you are, whatever your personal truth, whatever your passion, whatever you want to talk about, there will be critics who are, you know, entitled to their own opinion who might come out against you and say that what you're doing is silly or stupid or bad. But I feel like over the past month, I've had a really profound shift in my perception of self and reality and the whole YouTube thing and the attack that the cult has thrown against me, the smear campaign, their false accusations. I finally came to a place where I kind of feel like I'm ready to say, fuck it. I was recently interviewed by Dr. Phil, as I've mentioned in my last video, and I feel like I'm still kind of in the calm before the storm of that getting released because it's going to air tomorrow, Wednesday the 30th of November. But one of the really beautiful gems I took away from that experience was in the very beginning of the show, before I was brought on stage to tell my cult experience, Dr. Phil said something really, really good, really comforting, really uh, validating in his introduction to the topic. He said that a lot of people believe in wacky things, and this is me paraphrasing, I'm, I forget his exact words, I didn't take a transcript or memorize it or whatever, but he basically said there are people who have fringe beliefs, people who believe in strange stuff. That in and of itself is not culty. It's when those different kinds of beliefs get used to control people, to disempower people, and to exploit people. So a single individual leader's agenda or a group of people's interests are creating a monopoly against those who believe them. That's when it becomes culty. And, you know, as he was saying it, I started to think, you know, all this time I've been ashamed of the innate spirituality that led me into a cult in the first place, feeling as though I was ripe for the picking. I was like a prime candidate to get recruited into a cult because of my belief in synchronicities, because of my love for higher consciousness, because 
my goals in life are less to do with material acquisition and you know sex and marriage and families and I've never been driven by the same things that motivate other people and I'm not saying those things are bad or that I wouldn't enjoy them if they happened in my life I'm just saying my goals have always been more about awakening a higher consciousness radiating love and light connecting with crystal energy having cool mystical experiences and meditation it's interesting that after leaving the cult i felt like i should drop all of that and become quote unquote normal because that would be socially acceptable and also make me less of a target for potential future cult-like manipulation or abuse. But yeah, hearing a, a professional, somebody who's very respected in the field of psychology, flat out say it's not the wacky weird beliefs that are problematic, it's the exploitation done in the name of those beliefs that's problematic. That kind of created in me the, the shift or the ability to look at the things that I love and that I feel passionate about less critically. It's not wrong that I enjoy yoga and meditation and believe in the deities and have Mahakali as my Ishta Devata and feel drawn to explore temples. I love Hinduism. If I were to label myself as being a believer in any singular religious tradition, it would be Sanatana Dharma. The reason I don't label myself as a religious practitioner is more that I see consciousness in all different kinds of things. I, as I said, the crystals, the star seeds, the new agey sort of stuff. And I don't want to do a disservice to one by claiming to be exclusively a believer in the other. But I still love Hinduism and meditation. I, I've started doing daily yoga again and what I feel like I want to express in this video, and I'm sorry, but as per usual, I've got a roundabout long-winded way of getting to the point. It's that I'm ready to start talking about spiritual things again. I'm ready to maybe remake some of my old videos. I've had people say they really enjoyed some of the guided meditations I had offered early in my YouTube life that I deleted. Um, I spoke about the conspiracy against enlightenment and how a lot of things that exist in our society that are accepted as the norm or the ideal actually take us away from our conscious exploration of self, take us away from our inner truth. I deleted all of those videos while I was going through the deprogramming process because I didn't want any content on my channel that would in any way whatsoever mislead people. And in all of those videos, even the videos I made before I took the monastic vow of brahmacharyam in the cult, I always made my videos wearing malas that had the face of the fraud on them. And I don't want people tuning into my channel seeing his face. I used to give shout outs to him or quote him or put links embedded in the screen that would lead to his discourses and I would not ever want anybody to watch one of my videos now and get led to a fraudulent cult leader who's there only to exploit them. So the reason I deleted all that old content, just to clarify if anyone's been wondering, it's not because I no longer stand by my personal experiences or my spiritual passion, it's that I could not leave them up and risk people getting linked to a cult because of them. I already feel a lot of regret, remorse, and I've apologized and will continue to apologize for having been a recruiter in that cult, for being used by the cult to bring in more followers. And in some ways I might have been punishing myself by focusing almost exclusively on cult debunking and whistleblowing because I felt like why should I benefit from promoting my business, promoting my tarot readings, promoting my crystal jewelry, 
when I caused so much harm to so many people talking about spirituality in the past that led them into a trap. Now I've kind of come to a more holistic approach of forgiving myself. And it feels a little vulnerable to make a video and talk about this because it's not the kind of thing a lot of people talk about, but maybe you're watching this because you can relate. Maybe you've made a mistake in the past that you felt so ashamed of and guilty about that you've avoided talking about because talking about it makes it more real, brings it more to the surface, and also leaves you open to attack. But I feel now is the time we can all kind of collectively rise into a greater space of satya, of truth, and be more vulnerable and be more open. So I, in the past, I would go through waves where on a high, I might feel like it's okay to talk about crystals. I still love them. I still believe in them. And then I go into a low of thinking, well, rational, scientific minded people are going to think this is bullshit. So I better make a video and say it could be placebo. You don't have to believe in it. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't be dripping in so many gemstones if I didn't believe in it, right? I feel like now all the mystical things, the signs, the synchronicities, the experiences that I went through that led me to the cult. I just did a podcast with a lovely friend of mine named Surya Devi or Surya Devi, depending on how you pronounce the Sanskrit. And we were talking about this and she said, yeah, you were led into that organization to expose it, to recognize the abuse, to speak out. And I can finally feel confident in that. And I know I've mentioned this in previous videos, like some of you might be hearing this and thinking, well, yeah, Sarah, you've said all this before, but I've gone through phases of saying it and believing it and being comfortable with it and then backtracking and feeling really unsure about everything. The one thing that has been a constant since I found out about the child beatings and discovered there were multiple sexual abuse victims of Nityananda, the one thing I've been clear about from the beginning is that this is a cult. It needs to be exposed. He's committed crimes. Those crimes need to be made public to save other people from falling into it. And ideally to have him arrested so that the people who are trapped in his organization now can be free. But everything else I've kind of gone through phases of wondering, should I talk about these things? Should I not talk about these things? Am I even qualified to talk about these things? Because I've been led to crazy negative situations in my life. But now I'm thinking from the perspective of transmute the negative, take all the negative, take all the bad experiences, and be grateful for them because they were learning experiences. Every shitty thing that's been said against me by brainwashed followers of Nityananda proves that they are implementing Scientology's fair game policy. They falsely accused me of rape, of attempted assassination, of being a Vatican paid implant sent to destroy Hinduism. Obviously none of that is true, but I allowed it to bother me because my ego was attached to my public image. Like, what do people think of me? How can I, how can I talk about anything when people can Google me and find all kinds of crazy misinformation? Now, like I've said, I've kind of remembered again, oh right, we're living in Maya. This whole world is Maya. This is a playground of consciousness. These physical bodies we're in, these vessels are not us. They're just temporary embodiments that we take to experience this realm and experience this lifetime. At the end of the day, if a bunch of strangers who I'm never going to meet, who really don't matter in my life, believe bullshit that brainwashed people are saying, does it matter? And really no. And so if I feel like I want to talk about the Arcturians and I want to talk about crystal healing and tarot reading and the mystical aspect of sacred art and 
abstract drawing as a form of channeling. Why the hell not? This life is meant for us to enjoy. We're meant to do what we love and not feel ashamed of the things that make us the unique expressions of divinity that each and every one of us actually are. So yeah, thank you, Linda, for your comment. It came just exactly at the right time when I've been seriously thinking about reopening the door to talk about more spiritual stuff and more personal stuff. And yeah, so there you have it. I will start retelling some of the old stories I had told early on in this channel. I am going to start doing more drawing videos again too, just because I really feel that channeling frequencies through abstract art is part of why I'm here. I love it, therefore I should do it. Whether it's needed or not is irrelevant. It's like what we want to do, that's what we should do. And I will start talking more about crystal jewelry and crystal healing. If you've heard me say this in the past and I haven't done it, sorry, <laughs> sorry, but I wasn't ready for it yet. And I'm sure you've had this happen in your life too. Like, let me know in a comment. Have you ever innately known that there's something you want to do in your life? Like you feel called to do something and you get really excited, you write it down, you're manifesting it, and then you just shut down. It's like the moment you go to actually do this thing that you foresee yourself doing and declare you're going to do and manifest that you're going to do, when it's time to actually do the thing, you just can't bring yourself to do it. What I think is going on there is that we get glimpses of our life purpose. We get glimpses of our path. And during those glimpses, we get so motivated and inspired and excited because we see ourselves doing the thing that we love. But that glimpse came kind of like a beacon of hope. It kind of like a sign on the highway that tells you you're on the right path to your destination. It doesn't mean now is the time to do it. It just means this is coming. And so I feel like I'm one of those people who gets over enthusiastic early and I'll feel like, okay, yes, I'm going to start talking about Arcturians again. I'm going to start talking about my connection with Mahavatar Babaji again. I'll talk about this. I'll talk about that. And because I don't really have much of a filter when I'm talking, I might announce something before I'm ready to actually deliver. So I'm really sorry if you have been looking forward to some kind of specific content from me and then I just haven't made that content yet. Bear with me, it's coming, but I'm not going to give you a timeline or say when it's coming. I'll just say, I'm getting there. I'm going through my own healing. I'm starting to feel empowered once again, and I'm starting to let go of the anxiety that I was holding on to from all the attacks by cult members. I'm letting go of the anxiety that they're going to doctor up more false rape accusations against me. I'm letting go of the anxiety that every time I open my laptop, somebody will have tried to hack into my account and I'll have to change all my passwords again. I'm letting go of all of that and bracing myself because I feel like there's a new wave of energy coming in that is inspiring me to, yeah, just be real, be authentic, and not, not censor myself in anticipation of a negative outcome that might not actually be coming. So if you've got any questions, if there's any specific topic I mentioned here that interests you that you'd like to see a video about, let me know in a comment because I'm starting to compile a list of videos I'd like to make. Um, I will say when it comes to vegan recipes and vegan cooking, I don't really have the right kind of a kitchen setup right now to film a video that would be as aesthetically pleasing as I'd like it to be. I've got kind of a, a grungy looking kitchen. It's clean. But it's got, you know, avocado colored countertops and brown cupboards and just it's it's not very aesthetic. So I might do those videos in the future when I've manifested a new place. Until then, you're probably going to have this as the backdrop when I'm talking to the camera and you'll see my hands when I'm drawing or reading tarot cards. But we'll get there.
And in the meantime, I can maybe put some links to channels I do recommend whose recipes I follow. And that way you'll still have, you know, access to that kind of content. It just won't be made by me. But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for continuing to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for finding me and subscribing if you're somebody new. And as a thank you, I've created a coupon code for my Etsy gemstone jewelry shop called The Art of Gems. And in the spirit of getting excited about repeat numbers again, it's for 11% off and the coupon code is 1111, spelled E-L-E-V-E-N and then the numbers one and one. So 1111 for 11% off. And I'll put that maybe in a pinned comment and in the video description below. And also I'm excited to announce that I have a website where I've shared some of my journey in exposing the cult, links to interviews I've done, links to media that I've done, as well as links to my social medias and my jewelry and my tarot readings. It's a work in progress. I'd like to develop more of a blog there, maybe add more photos, add maybe even a video just for that site. But until then, even though Nothing is ever perfect, and sometimes I feel like we've got to put it out there anyway, just so that we get the momentum building and we get the ball rolling. So yeah, you can check out my website if you feel so inclined. There is a place where you can sign up to join my mailing list. You are not going to get spammed, I promise you that. I'll only put out an, an email to that email list if I have something to announce that I think you would be interested in. For example, I'm working on a book when it's when that book is published, I'll send an email. If I do another show like Dr. Phil, or if I do a podcast, I'll send you a link to where you can listen and watch it. So be sure to sign up to that email list if you're interested. I might do exclusive coupon codes like the one I announced today, the 1111 code. Um, we'll see. It's playful. It's something new. But I hope you'll check it out. And yeah, I guess that's about it for today. So just like I said, thank you for being with me on this journey. I'm sorry if you've been disappointed by my lack of content over the last few years, but I think we're getting back to life again after being totally thrown off by the cult experience. And by we, I mean myself and a lot of my friends who are also survivors of the Nityananda cult. We've all kind of gone through it where it's like, was there something wrong with us that led us to that cult that made us so vulnerable? I mean, another one of the things Dr. Phil said that I found very healing and comforting and empowering was that cults do not attract stupid, gullible people who have a bad agenda, who want to be cult members. Cults will attract people who want to make the world a better place. And so it's like, wait a minute, maybe there wasn't anything wrong with us. I mean, duh, every psychologist says that too, right? Like this isn't, it's not like he's saying anything new. It's just you hear something sometimes and it finally clicks. And yeah, it finally clicked that, yeah, that's right. We're the victims here. We did not do this to ourselves. It's like if somebody mugs you, it's not your fault for walking down the street with your wallet. It's the attacker who did the bad thing. Being recruited into a cult and having yourself hijacked by cult abuse and brainwashing and mind control, that's like getting mugged consciously. It's like a conscious mugging. They mugged your brain. So yeah, if, if you're in a cult-like group, if you've been manipulated, if you've been abused, if you've been victimized, it's not your fault. You were targeted, you were preyed upon because of something really good in you that the abuser felt they could exploit and manipulate and take advantage of. So breathe it out with me. You are not at fault. You're a great person. Whatever you were in love with and passionate about before you got abused like that, it's not bad. That's for you to enjoy if you choose to enjoy it again. And yeah, whether you're into Arcturians and crystals and mystical stuff like me or not, 
I hope that you will validate and appreciate and love your journey and your uniqueness and don't be ashamed to be into stuff that's different than the stuff other people are into. Just be mindful never to try to exploit anybody else through your passions. Um, another thing I was saying with my friend Surya Devi on her podcast is that when we've been in cults and we've been exploited by the wrong kinds of spiritual teachers who are taking advantage and trying to get rich and powerful and drain the energy of their students, we will often feel like we should never talk about spirituality publicly because we don't want to risk doing to others what was done to us. And that's a really sad thing because that creates a world in which the only people talking about spirituality are parasitic individuals trying to climb higher on the backs of abused followers. That's not cool. There needs to be a space where we can be open and spiritual and share in that kind of an uplifting, mutually beneficial community. So I think this has also given me kind of the push, the go ahead, the permission slip, as Bashar might call it, to talk about this stuff again with less of a fear of controversy. Okay, last thing I'm gonna say in this video and then I'm going to end it because I'm trying to keep my videos around the half hour mark just so they're not too long for people. But the last thing, I was li listening to a podcast recently, a little bit culty with my friend and hero, Sarah Edmondson and her husband, Nippy. They interviewed Eckhart Tolle and had asked him he himself is a best-selling author, a spiritual teacher, revered figure in the field of spirituality. And they asked him, how do you do what you do without becoming a cult leader? And he said he is very open with his students about the fact that he is human and he is not perfect. He still likes to drink wine. He still makes mistakes. He lives in an apartment. And he said, if a spiritual teacher has a message that is beneficial for their student and is, is good and is not ego-based and is not trying to present themselves as a savior, as a guru, as an incarnation of a divine being that can never be equaled or reached, that individual should stay humble and continue to share about their mistakes. And the reason I want to mention this is that I found his talk on a little bit culty so inspiring and it reminded me, oh yeah, like it is still okay to read books by spiritual teachers who are genuine. People like Eckhart Tolle. Now I'm not saying this is an endorsement for his books. I haven't read any of them yet, but it was kind of like, oh wow, I used to love going to spiritual bookstores and reading spiritual books maybe that's something I can start doing again. So let me know how you feel about that. I saw that Sarah and Nippy had a lot of bad feedback about that episode. A lot of people were triggered because Eckhart reminded them of cult leaders that they had known. But personally, I found it really encouraging and inspiring. So how do, where, how do you feel about that stuff? Like, are you where I was maybe like a month or two ago, which is like, don't talk to me about gurus or spiritual teachers or you know what I do yoga but I don't want to follow any yogis okay like let, let's each just do our own thing and forget such a thing as community exists now I've kind of come to a place where I'm ready to be open and vulnerable again I feel like I'm at a place spiritually where a lot of people who leave abusive relationships might get into romantically where sometimes you have a really negative romantic experience and you leave and you're like fuck this I'm gonna be single forever I don't ever want to be in that position again and then after some healing and some therapy and some processing the person decides to be open to love once again I feel like coming out of cult abuse and cult trauma creates in us that feeling of a person who leaves a toxic relationship and says, that's it, I'm done with relationships. A lot of us left that cult and felt like, that's it, I'm done with the world of spirituality. 
But now it's like, okay, we've gone through enough healing, we've done enough of the introspection, we've recognized what the red flags were, we're not going to be abused again. Now it's time to once again be open to spirituality. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with this. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of my journey here. I would love to hear how you feel about this kind of stuff, as always. So my comment section is ever open to you. So much love. Remember the coupon code 1111 if you'd like to support my work by buying some jewelry. And I guess we'll talk soon. Bye.